Hello there, I'm Tim and he's John and this is How to Murder Time, a podcast about games and things. You almost forgot. I, yeah, I keep almost forgetting the name, which is probably just on early onset dementia or something. 200 I don't know. episodes. 200 nearly. Yeah. yeah. And you still can't remember the name. I can't remember my name. Oh. This was Doctor introducing it to the Van Hemlock podcast. Yes, yes, that took about 30 episodes to get the hang of. Uh, we're back with Hello. some more chatting about games. Yes, what games are we chatting about this week? <laughs> I'm going to do the static group roundup type thing. Are we going to start thing. with games or is there going to be some ramble about holiday or I've whatever? I've done nothing <laughs> this week, it was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I have sort of started the couch to 5k again because yeah. uh, I keep falling off the wagon, as it were. Uh, and now I'm not doing the excessive hikings at weekends because I can't do them both. The one wears me out for the other if and vice versa. Half, Three times hike, a week, half an hour of running. Hike 5k away. <laughs> and then run back. Yeah. Do both, yes. Couch to 500k. That's that's the way I think probably, yeah. um, but yes. Yeah, so I got me got me headphones in and I got me little downloads and and every time I restart the program, Laura sounds more and more sarcastic. So yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, good good work on the first week. You've done really well, and I'm hearing that as really well. So like, oh right, okay, yeah. So um, and and this is just a static piece of audio, you know. Yeah. It's not changed. It hasn't changed. I'm just getting more and more paranoid. And All it nuts. will take is a little counter in the app. Yeah, number of it's, times, it's, right times it's been played. Yeah. Oh, you're back, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you think you're just going to get back on it? Yeah, yeah. I'd so, say, I'll see you next week for week <laughs> two, but we both know it's going to be week one again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So week one of the Cats to Five K again. Um, yeah. So which is which is nice, easy shuffling and a bit a slight bit of running for a bus. Do you feel that maybe you should be starting at week five? Or? I, no. <laughs> <laughs> week five's hard. It's, well, I mean, I, yeah, my my legs are nice and powerful. I've been hiking up and down cliffs and yeah. things, and generally it's, it's the breathing. Oh, I yeah. can't. I just you can't. Need to do that. I can't supply the oxygen fast enough. So the running training type thing probably will help for something. I don't know. So yes, doing that and okay. just just as it's coming into October and starting to get colder again. Yeah. So that's good. Be running in the dark soon. Clocks go back at the end of this month. They do they? Yeah. So I don't like running at night. It's it's a bit grim. But um, you know, street lights, reflective gear, get on with it. Yeah. So I'm gonna talk about games. Go on then. So Mondays, where do we start? We start Mondays. Is oh, part- roundup. Yeah, so yes, it's static group roundup type thing. Mondays is Path of Exile. Um, I really still don't quite know what's going on with that, to be honest. Are you just spamming <laughs> abilities and um, fights are ending and everyone yeah. is saying, good work, good, Tim. Good work, Tim. Okay, I did a thing. I'm good at finding dead ends. <laughs> Uh, that's my big role in the team. They're, they're, they're fighting, they're fighting, and sometimes they follow me, and I don't know why, because I inevitably go down a cold sack and hit a brick wall and then yeah. have to come back, and they catch me coming the other way. And sometimes I'm also quite good at getting lost. Um, they all go off and fight a thing and do the objective, and I'm, I'm like half a map away, and I don't know why, because I can't stop fighting on a... You get a trail of monsters yeah. coming in, and I just follow it all the way, and next thing I know, I'm about a quarter of a mile away from the rest of the team and uh, facing a boss on my own. come from. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's me, yeah. I wonder if I'm generating them somehow um yeah i don't understand many of my powers i'm a marauder which is the full strength type class which is basically about hitting things with a stick yeah i've got quite a powerful stick but it's the borderlands problem in in the the random loot generation means i haven't seen an upgrade in about you know two weeks or so so i'm not sure if i'm bothering even to loot yellow grade gear now i mean you just don't even stop for white grade gear and some of them i can't be bothered with blue grade gear anymore and i used to pick the yellow drops up because they were supposed quite rare but I just can't be bothered with those anymore so I don't know I'm just losing my mojo and focus a bit in there but um, we're following a story and doing a plot and things and I don't really understand there was one week where we were fighting in the obligatory hey look you're in the intestines of a giant creature level oh yes the, the, obli- the obligatory biological nightmare level um, no well yes we did I think no we chainsawed our way in you, we, had, we went to heaven and then hell and stole a crystal from each and put them in a device which blew a hole in the side of a mountain which turned out to be the stone exterior of a gribbly thing made of intestinal tracts which we were fighting our way okay. through I don't really understand or remember why we were there um, I think it's there was... dead now so it's all fine <laughs> it's dead now so it's all fine and that turned out to be the beginning of act something or other five maybe did we're... people complain the mountain stopped moving um, well I, think it was mo- I don't think it was moving in the first place so I'm not quite sure what threat this mountain stroke big stone hided monster was. Was it a thing that was around and so should be killed? I don't know. That you can. There was a thing. Are at, you part of the problem? There was an arrow on the mini-map and so we followed it and yeah. we killed what we found. Um, oh yes, we are absolute murder hobos. I mean, in the classic textbook sense, I've no idea why we're <laughs> killing these things and I'm not even stopping to steal their stuff. It is literally murder for its own sake. Uh, at quite a high pace. Yeah. I mean, it is fun. It's, it, 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 
you know, when we've all got different classes and we're all doing crazy powers and explosions and it rains fire loads and everyone's summoned a load of monsters that go in and help as well and I'm hitting stuff in. I've managed to do some weird accidental theory crafting, which meant, means that every time I hit something with my with my big stick, uh, it does an AOE. Yeah. Everything it hits with the AR, AOE, it does extra damage on and it does life stealing from and it does something else as well. I can't remember. It's like AOE from everything that I hit. There was an extra AOE or something like that. So basically I run in and go, whoomp, and everything just goes, whoop, and I, my health goes all the way up to the top again. So basically oh. as long as they're attacking me, I am invincible. Um, <laughs> so I think so the only way they, they have to win is not to Yes, yeah, not to play at all. Absolutely, they haven't learned that lesson yet. So, no, the Marauder is is your classic sort of tank archetype, me- melee damage, AOE, plan A, go for it. And and with all the life stealing modifications added to the uh, the gear, you tend to find yourself really sustainable, really durable, and just can take almost anything. I don't know if it's too easy. It does it does scale for group sizes, but yeah. perhaps we're just quite good at Diablo by now in our lives. You know, we, this is not our first Diablo alike. Diablo was probably our first Diablo alike in most cases. Uh, and so I don't know. It's I mean some of the boss fights, you know, the proper end of act bosses, which were their multi phase. Now he's gone into this mode and has a bubble, and we have to do yeah. some other stuff. Those can be a bit tricky while we try and work out what the hell's going on. So we do see a few, few die and run back moments there. But on the whole, it is just a massive <laughs> mobo, murder hobo zerg. Um, monster. Yeah, I am a monster. I, I am the problem. Um, now we're in, I think, the fall of Oriath bit, which is the, the huge mega expansion that dropped not so long ago which added a whole number of acts and we're in this big sort of Romanesque city with like plazas and stuff and okay. civilians there are frightened civilians running around on the map that are attackable and do not survive our murderous rampage Joy. so uh, yes in, in context I'm a monster murder yeah. hobo as well so I just have nothing to say for myself really apart from sorry um, yeah I don't know how much further it, it has to run plot wise uh, or how many more weeks we're going to be playing anyway because uh, more mountains need killing well yeah I still don't quite understand killing. what that was about but um, um, but yes, we fought a god, and that made everything go dark. And we've—I think we killed. Yes, last week we killed God, and now we're working for the devil, and trying to rebuild God because there's some elder horror that's now unleashed on the unleashed on the world. And that was a, our fault. I have a question. Yeah, whose side are you on? I don't know anymore, really. Uh, which, which are you the good guys, the bad guys, or the bad guys look at you and think, ooh. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's it's got that feel of uh, oh god, what was it? There's some some game I can't remember. Some long running story game where you end up. Sw- yeah, I think the original Guild Wars One Prophecies campaign. You basically switch sides during that. They like you know because all dramatic stories need a third act reversal. Mm-hmm. The bit where you find out that the mission controller voice that you've been following all the way through the game is actually the villain. Yep. They love that trope so much they pull it about four or five times during this <laughs> narrative story <laughs> plot of Guild, of Guild Wars One Prophecies expansion by the end of it i have no idea if i'm supposed to be working against the white mantle for the white mantle the mercer are good guys or bad guys the arch lich you know the the the, the big demon lich thing the, the vizier what's going on there you know you do yeah. you, just, so you know five, five out the second or third one of those you just think whatever po- point me <laughs> out how many and where are they and yeah. that's basically the the attitude i brought with me to the start of path of exile and it's not improved no. i don't really understand i might there might be a wiki somewhere i can go away and read read about what actually what the hell actually happened back there but mostly i'm just sort of confusedly following the arrow on the mini map and hitting everything in between me and it so i'd expect nothing less it's pretty much how gaming works i it's a shame because i think they, they've done law you know i mean the in the outposts there are people you talk to and they've got things that to say that aren't quest objectives you know things that you talk to that don't advance any kind of tracker or any, <laughs> some word shapes come up the screen and, and you learn about what's going on apparently uh, is it mainly people saying that there is a unknown evil which has come into the land? I probably don't know what it is because there are no survivors, but it sounds like a group of. I don't know. Most people. of the towns only have about four inhabitants. Yeah, so something bad's happened. Yeah. Uh, Was no, it you? I don't know what ha- I don't know what they say. Cause you, I- <laughs> have you been to these towns before? Perhaps, perhaps that's that's where my amnesia comes in. I'm sure I'm an amnesiac at the start of this. Did all uh, of these people go to work in a dungeon one day and not come back? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's millions and millions of monsters out there, so perhaps those monsters were originally some of the people or something like that. Anyway, it's it's, it's not a it's not a sensible demographic base to build a GDP mm. on, no. So um, yeah, it's it's kinetic, it's spectacular, and it is fun on the moment to moment gameplay. Obviously, you know, a good Diablo clone is intrinsically yeah, fun. Yeah. It's a 
good format. Click, 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 explosions, loot, hooray. But, you know, as to why I'm there and what's going on, I couldn't really tell you, to be honest. I'd have to go away and find out, even though I sort of was there and have caused some of it. Um, so, <laughs> so, I don't know. Perhaps I'm doing the game an enormous disservice and perhaps the law is solid and, you know, well-contained and perhaps, you know, the, 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 there might be scope for a spin-off RPG D20 system sort of core rule books no, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be so flimsy. Cause it's Diablo the role-playing game. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, it does the job. It's, it, you know, it's the scaffolding that holds up the sort of Wild West town frontages, you know, that yeah. kind of feel to it all. It's, you know, you get the impression of being in a city, but it's all just porter cabins around the back, you know. Um, yeah, it does the job. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, despite, you know, not really understanding what's going on or <laughs> how, how most of my abilities work or what anyone else is doing. Some people can teleport. I, I, they're trying to work out if the particle effects... I mean, most, at least, yeah, I think Tarag was saying, at least in, other, in you know, a lot of other games, you have the the game has the decency for the enemy's fire to be a different colour. <laughs> I just don't know. The, sud, the screen just suddenly erupts with raining flames and I'm just going, right, all right, who who, who did that? Someone own up. Who did that? Was it me? Is, is, am, I, am I supposed to stand under this one or not? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't have friendly fire, which is just as bloody well, because pretty much at any given time, at least three of the team are doing something that fills the entire screen with pulsing, you know. Uh, we you had can't a, be clever, be pretty. We had a, we had a fantastic part of effect going on in the early weeks which didn't ha- st- suddenly stopped happening and we don't know why which was one where you hit when every so often you hit something and every single member of the team has about sort of 30 or 40 red radial darts fly out of them in all directions it's just and and every time it happened it was like watching fireworks it's like oh <laughs> mumble you know we're all very pleased with that but it, then it suddenly stopped happening we couldn't work out we, we actually tried to work we saw it she's like stop everybody halt and then, right now everybody work through your abilities one at a time no nope. crossing them off a list we couldn't work out where it was coming from and then it just suddenly stopped happening after about huh. week two or something it might have been something to do with your, your leagues or your events because when you create a new character in path of exile you can do standard characters or you can create a character in one of these leagues and what those are essentially is time limited um, sort of challenge modes yeah. that expire and, and you get bonus loot while doing them and then when when it ends your character drops back into a standard character and on you go and I think that's the default character creation but the trouble is if you're doing that you're not allowed to group um, okay. with, I think you can't group or can't group with people who aren't in the same doing the same challenge league as you because you're not allowed to twink stuff yeah. across or pass each other gear that kind of thing so it all got very complicated and we are all on standard in the end it's fun. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know about giving them any money. There's nothing. They haven't got anything I want. Bit particularly, That's it's, in, it's entirely shots. cosmetic. There's. The, I don't think they've got. I think they've got bank tabs. I haven't filled yeah. one tab out of the four I've got so far. Really, I think I feel like I well, perhaps I ought to donate them something. But have That's they got? The have problem. they got a PayPal or a Patreon or something? I mean, if you're just selling hats. And it is all hats. just glowing wings and stuff. And. You know, bloody footprints that follow your character around, and and that's all. It looks great, but bear in mind that this is an instance-based game where there's only you going to be you and yeah. like one or two other players that you know already in the same place with you, or random. or in the town hubs where you do see random people. Yeah, if you pick up grouping, I guess. Ah. Yeah, I, I think that that kind of cosmetic is for the sort of person who doesn't just kick. Uh, click next on character creation. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, just well, there is no real character customization. Ah. You, you've got you've got like six you've got six basic classes. There's a seventh you can unlock later on. But and the the models for those they they are gender locked, and there's just one model for each one. I mean, you can put different armor on to slightly customize them. And I suppose yeah, this this go to the cash shop and buy some flaming eyes yeah. is about the only way you can make your character look unique. Because all than the fact that all the cool ones everyone has, all the marauders look the same because they are the same you know giant yeah. man holding a club type guy so yeah i don't know but yeah i'm enjoying it i'm just you know it's very very lightweight very shallow you know yeah. it's, it's it is a skeleton clicker and it's fun for what it is but there's, i don't really see any there'll be a week when we'll just decide not to carry on and i'll just think oh, okay and move on and not really miss it at all. Forget it <laughs> completely <laughs> forget yeah not really remember i played it so you know it's not something that creates a lasting impression i don't think for, for me but i don't know it's a different different Horses for courses and yeah. all that, but yeah, so we're still playing that. But I've no idea why or or how or where. <laughs> or, or, I think I just about remember when, which is Mondays at eight o'clock. Apart from that, you know, then 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 follows about three hours of mad clicking and giggling, and then after that, I don't know what happened just there. It's it's odd. It Sounds is. like most of my Mondays. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure drinking heavily wouldn't wouldn't help to be honest. Um, yeah. So Tuesdays is Elite Dangerous. Yay. Do you want to talk about a thing, actually? Because I'm going to do the entire week otherwise, and you're going to have nothing to say. Okay, I'm going to quickly talk about Minecraft. All right, yeah. I've been playing this new Minecraft game. Oh, Minecraft? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, you're mentioning How does that work? Uh, yes, uh, I've been playing Age of Engineering, which is a mod. Age of Engineering? Which is okay. a mod which does something which I really, really, really like. Yeah. It takes all the other mods yeah. and puts them in a proper progression. Oh, a bit like Regrowth. Well. No, but it puts them in a proper <laughs> progression. Proper progression. So, <laughs> in order to unlock... Um, uh, IC2, Industrial Craft, yep. you have to, uh, I think, get through the Stone Age first, which is you have to make the okay. set of stone tools. Because I sort of that. thought that's what they were aiming at with regrowth, but it was a bit arbitrary in a lot yeah. of places. It's yeah. like, oh, God, we've got Britannia. How do we fit that in? Oh, okay, here. And so you do that, and then yeah. you use stuff in Industrial Craft. You, you need to be able to start making uh, Industrial Crushers and things, get to the next bit, then over the next bit. Yeah. And these mods will do the same sort of thing, yeah. but it doesn't matter because they're gated properly. So you can't just run ahead and get Ender I.O. in. Yeah. You have to go through to get to that point. So you always have a task to do. Well, that was one of the things I really approved. Because I've really, to be honest, I've just, I don't think I could play vanilla Minecraft no, anymore. Either. You know, I've done with that, which essentially is just Lego building blocks, whatever. But the the mod packs, with, like the best of the world, like Regrowth, I suppose, and uh, to a lesser extent, the Sky Factory 2 thing, 3, um, right. three sir, which, uh, which give you a quest book and try and get you to do stuff yeah. in some kind of narrative order, which is how I've come to understand and yeah. learn to interact with games in general, is a start, a middle, and an end, a series of objectives. And well, it's nice to have that kind of thing. There is Sky Factory, uh, I think you'll agree, considering <laughs> we're on the last page of the book, we're and nearly it's just there. a complete case of... Oh crap! What have we got to do What's now? What's got to do now? Yeah. Oh, we just got to do a billion iron for tick. Okay, that's just one useless thing we're never going to use again. Yeah, it, we can case, do this. It's going to take eight hundred yeah. of this block and a lot of fiddling around. But yeah, yeah. How was the build going? Uh, I've, 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 I'm getting there. I made a start. Yeah. But this actually, okay, you, you're going to support like industrial craft. You're going to ignore nearly all of that the moment you get onto the next mod. Hmm. But you'll have built it and used it to bootstrap up. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm making rooms of each mod. Okay, so it becomes a living museum yeah. of your progress through the ages. And here's your trophies when you get to the uh, hmm. uh, next age. Okay. Uh, which are the things just placed down on the edge of name one. It's quite interesting. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a really nice little mod, I think. Um, that sounds made, quite intelligent way to approach the hundreds of mods all in one mod pack yeah, type thing. They've yeah. made a lot of the recipes a lot harder. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, because you're needing something can only be made with this mod. Yeah. Um, a lot of the recipes are a lot more expensive, so it is harder. Does that mean you do need to keep the old machinery around because you have to make the stuff that's required as uh, the first products of the next thing? Yeah, actually, there's quite a lot of still needing to keep the machines around, but once you've opened up the AE system, it doesn't really matter because yeah. you're just putting them in construction. Mm. Uh, you also get to go to space. Oh, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, it's got the uh, mod where you build a rocket and go into orbit, make a space station and go to the planets. Space and what they've cleverly it's done like there... It's like Galacticraft. No, it? it's a different Something one. Something else, What yeah. they've cleverly done there mm. is they've made it so that some of the ores are only available on some planet. <laughs> so you have to go to them. Yeah, that sounds a very interesting thing, yeah. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it and it's quite fun. And uh, I'm not as far through it as I should be because I keep getting distracted on, oh, look, I'm in a world that's ground. <laughs> Yeah, that's wow. I miss the ground. Yeah. Mm. So, was that Age of Engineering? Yeah. You find that in the launcher, Curse Launcher, Twitch Launcher, whatever the hell yeah. is. Feed it's the Age of Engineering. Unfortunately, every time I say that, I keep thinking uh, Guild of Engineering and getting the theme music from that in my head. I think in Age of Empires for some reason, but mm. there you go. I don't have good theme music. No, yeah, good point. So, yeah, it's really good. I like it. Excellent. Good Minecraft tip there. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I could really start another Minecraft world, to be honest. I think I had my fill with this bloody Sky Factory thing <laughs> for now. There's going to be a pause between yes. the end of Sky Factory and maybe I won't... there ever being another Minecraft video ever. Well. <laughs> I won't be sad when it finishes, let's put it that way. I'll, I'll be pleased. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, well, um, Tuesdays is Elite Dangerous. Talked, yeah. talked a fair bit about that last week, but uh, we went and poked Thargoids Yay. this week. I got a feeling the Thargoids actually watched this show because I was, I still was so many Thargoids going on on Tuesday. A previously elusive race. Yeah. Um, how, how did you get them to? Uh... Well, we went to the Pleiades for the start, oh, yeah, which is the place where they are. But halfway out there, I got hyperdicted, which almost has oh. never happened to me before or anyone else we'd heard of. You know, we've seen YouTubes of it and know it happens. And yeah, suddenly uh, frameshift drive malfunction, and suddenly I'm in like halfway between two stars in space, and there's a giant sunflower spaceship bearing down on me, making all sorts of creepy noises, yeah, uh, and sinister music Was and things. Friendly? Um, it scanned me, and then just uh, it just sort of sat there, keeping pace with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, no matter how fast or what direction yeah. you go, it will just move around to be in front of you and keep the same distance, which was creepy as hell. But anyway, I managed to over uh, set the energy and uh, the engine up so that it could boost fast uh, with the pips and stuff. And I was just mashing tab, and eventually, if you get close enough to it, a whole load of detailing on it turns red. Oh, it, yeah, does yeah. that go badly? It, <laughs> Yeah, it's very good. The that, international sign of yes. I'm about to kill you. Yes, the uh, the Thargoids do obey the traffic, the basic uh, British Highway Code traffic light convention. Um, yeah, they turn red uh, and then launch a ton of drones, which then start firing on you. And I was like panicking at that point. You can see it all in the rear scanner going, Woo! and I uh, managed to uh, jump clear. And all my all my power systems went out as well. Uh, yeah. Um, but and I thought I, I didn't work out if that was the Thargoids or as I later realised that I'd overloaded my own power when I deploy the weapons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I think they might do. They so might, they might the slap big, you back. Who was your biggest enemy at that point? Uh, I think I might have been working with the Thargoids yeah. to, to to bring about my own downfall. Um, yes, odd. Um, but yes, I managed to jump clear and carry on on my way down to the Pleiades. I think we were in the Meriope system, not Maya, the one next to it. Um, but I think it's pretty much any star system in the Pleiades area within about 50 light years. Or you'll see this stuff. Out in space, you now can find uh, non the, the un, unidentified signal sources that you see all over the place. When you target one, it will analyse it and tell you what it is, like convoy, dispersal pattern, brackets, threat zero, that kind of thing. Well, there's a new type in there called non-human signal source brackets threat five uh okay. previously it only went up to four and four is something you might deal with in an anaconda or, or need a few yeah. friends to help with and yeah threat five it's like oh god that's creepy so uh, yeah let's do this um How could it be? yeah well i previously docked at a station out there and bought myself a zeno scanner Ooh. Yeah, yeah. So you got your wake scanners and your kill warrant scanners. They have on the exterior hard points of the ship. You can get a new one out in the Pleiades now called a wait a Zeno scanner. It's just basically a drill on a bit of string. <laughs> Fire it in, drill out a bit of flesh, put it in. Uh, well that's that's the research limpet. That oh, is an actual okay. research technique. Yeah, I know call these people scientists. Yeah. yeah, there are you can buy research limpets. I didn't bother with them. But yeah, you the idea with those is you will literally because normally a limpet is something you fire onto an asteroid yeah. and grabs bits of chunks and bring them back. Yeah, you can basically fire it at the alien at the uh, pre previously unaware and ignoring you, uh, <laughs> non-hostile alien superpower entity, uh, clamp onto the side, bite a bit off, and bring it back, and 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 I'm sure it's fine with that. You know, that's just how we say hello in yeah. human space. Um, so I didn't bother with that because I thought that might be a bit a bit asking for trouble, but it turns out I was asking for trouble all along anyway. So yes, yeah, so the Zeno scanner, you have to get within about two k of it, yeah. and it doesn't like it. No. <laughs> it starts to flare up red near the end, but basically, you, yeah. So you go to these un, un, these um, non-human signal source things, drop out in a frame shift, and you find this big green cloud, and there, there's like a wrecked Imperial Corvette thing there, or a cutter and clip, bits of stuff everywhere, black boxes, escape pods, and there's Thargoid there, big sunflower spaceship, yeah. who's got this big sort of helical. Um, green scanning thing That's coming funny. out. Yeah, big sort of spotlight thing. He's, he's basically scanning around the wreckage, picking up the escape pods and taking them. Oh. Yes. <laughs> If that was that's that's quite creepy. Yeah, I'm beginning to think these are the shadows of the piece rather than the forelorns. But um, yeah, I managed to grab a black box or two. But also, I've got a scan of the uh, Thargoid, which goes into your data materials. Yeah. You know, the engineers collected data scan stuff. Yeah. We like you scan wakes and stuff, and you get new materials. Here. There's a whole new set of Thargoid scans there. I was dead chuffed. I managed to get a few. I don't know who to take them to or why or what to do. Look, guys, guys, I scanned a Thargoid. No one cares. It's fine. <laughs> um, I imagine. Like, I imagine are. there might be new engineers or or, or or community goals that will so require this stuff. Your, uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I imagine if you actually use the limpet, you probably get some materials off of them as well. I don't know, but I didn't, none of us got that far. So um, <laughs> I'd lost the rest of the wig at this point. I think they were off doing something else. Really? Like, yeah, I know. Have you run off down a corridor? <laughs> I've had a dead end, yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, so... So, yeah, there were two Thargoids working through this wreckage, and, and uh, if you get close enough to one, they'll notice you, and suddenly... I think they have, they literally have green and red detailing, depending yeah. to tell you how, yeah. how hostile they are. Um, but, yes, uh, I managed to get a scan. It turned on me and started looking, and again, my power systems went out, and I thought, ah... and then Because later I realised adding the Xeno scanner had put me over my deploy wow. power limit, so I was probably... Yeah, I probably was cutting out my own things. I realised, though, what was going on and just turned off my weapons in the end, because I thought, that's not going to help, really. Did you it? have... 
Yeah, one, me- it, no, one medium beam laser and some multi cannons. Yeah. No, um, but no. Apparently, the anti thargoid missiles got nerfed. They did. They <laughs> um, adapted. Uh, yes, the 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 Galactic News message no- patch notes say that the thargoids have adapted to the anti thargoid weaponry, um, but no one believes a word of it. They reckon they, <laughs> they must have broke broke the damage scaling values in a, in the patch. So uh, suddenly, the, the 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 one method you use to specifically deal with these enemies no longer works. I just Co- Incidentally, about two about two days after some of the most hot games overachieve highest overachievers managed to actually kill a thargoid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's that whole. Oh, so we was look at the number of how many thargoids have been killed. Yeah, that number was oh, too high. Yeah, crank. Yeah, there goes the nerf lever. Well, apparently there's going to be because at the moment there's anti-thargoid missile launchers, yeah. which are dumb fire. Um, okay. Yeah, so you have to be, you have to, you know, Lucky know how to big. fly. They are quite big, yeah. Um, Get but, really close to flying, aren't they? Yeah, but I think the idea is not that they're supposed to be killable. Is that you're supposed to use these missiles to blow bits off, which you can then scoop and progress some story and stuff. I don't think okay. they were ever actually meant to be so actually what outright killable do, at this stage. Wait until it launches farglets, then you scoop them using your cargo scoop, and then sell them on the market back at later. It does launch farglets, so yeah. So so we did a few of those, and and yeah. Eventually, when it gets angry enough, it will launch Starglets. The whole sort of spiral of drones flying around it, and they're the one, they're the ones that actually do the shooting. It seems oh, okay. so it doesn't seem like the Thargoid itself has a massive death laser or yeah. anything. Well, yeah, exactly. It hasn't been well, necessary to use. We're only seeing one type of Thargoid as well. If you've managed to tag it with a successful Xeno scan, it it will tell you in the sidebar Thargoid Centaur variant, Ooh. you know, a Cyclops variant How does it or something. Know? I, yeah, well, <laughs> it's obviously that like arbitrary designation. But I don't know type six or yeah. one of twenty seven. Yes. Oh, sorry, lads. This is only a small one. Yeah, Thargoid Interceptor uh, um, Cyclops variant. Yeah. So, so presumably there's going to be all sorts of different sorts of Thargoids. But, uh, Thargoid Independence Day. Well, quite. Yeah. This is only this is only the scout ship. You know, and it's already it, these things. They're not actually as big as I was expecting. I managed to you know ham-fistedly work the exterior cinematic camera thing on some of the footage I've got for you but oh, uh, and you can see your own ship compared to the Thargoid and you can see the distances and ranges and stuff and they, they're, they're around the size about the size of an anaconda they're not uh, like they're not massive like capital ship I size things massive capital ship well yeah, exactly yeah maybe that thing that was parked on the planet we were all driving around inside we'll just take off one day the things know. that apparently have been moving four or five kilometers across those things are um yeah so we, we did that then we went to look for so we went to look for a barnacle forest which apparently is a new thing that the uh, this canon interstellar group had found and put on their website and we were we were, we were, we were a bit f- f- fans of theirs follow follow their because they, they got a very a huge group of players were really brainstorming the game's lore yeah. and doing the hard work and finding all this stuff and we just go to their website and <laughs> steal their steal their research well they shouldn't put it on a website they didn't want people to know definitely a hanger on absolutely a hanger on and i'll explain why in great detail <laughs> in a minute so we went and found this barnacle forest and it's normally barnacles uh, like ground crystal things that you can shoot bits off this is where these meta alloys come yeah. from yeah. um but you only ever see one or two normally and apparently we found a place where there was just an enormous like snow well we didn't find uh, we were directed to a place where there's a massive pl- set of them on this plane. Um, but we got there as soon as, oh, that's good. We can get some meta alloys, souvenir for the home. As soon as we got there, this massive Thargoid comes out of the sky, comes down and starts <laughs> big beam scan thing on the thing. And oh, crikey, this is, this is, yeah. And then we look around and there's another one. I thought, oh, God, what's hang on? I've got uh, proximity alert. What's going on? Ah! <laughs> second, second one behind me. Um, yeah, and I, I hung around far too long there and I, I, I managed to screw my power systems as well. And if, 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 funny thing, if you're not in deep space, if you're, say, for example, you know, 20 or 30 yeah. meters above the surface of a planet and your power our systems turn off. Does gravity have a gravity thing? ensues. Yes, gravity is a harsh mistress. I bounced a couple of times, took quite a lot of damage, and then the Thargoid just came around and totally kicked the, <laughs> kicked the absolutely absolute snot out of me. It was, they, I didn't. I lasted two or three seconds. I mean, I was amazed it wasn't an insta kill. But were your shields off? Uh, yes, they hadn't come back, but they, it chewed through my Diamondback Explorer's hull in in you know about five or six seconds. I was desperately tried to jump, 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 jump. Not enough power in anything. Oh god! It's one of those ticks bouncing along the terrain. It's one of those ticks on 2017 gaming. <laughs> Ten years ago, you never thought you were going to get killed by a Thargoid. I know. Tick. I was killed by a Thargoid. That was brilliant. So um, yeah, dead. Um, there's a rebuy screen. I was like, oh right, okay. I can only afford to do this another 90 times. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that is. 
importantly, you're 100 light years, 100,000 light years. No, away. no, we docked. We docked somewhere nearby. We docked somewhere nearby. We docked. We went to the system to find these barnacles and what this barnacle field. Uh, and in system was a thing, an object called the gnosis. The gnosis, whatever. Oh, yeah. G-N-O-S-I-S. Geonosis. It's Geonosis. Where? That's not the Star Wars oh. thing, no. Uh, which How it, do you know that? You hate this, Star Wars. I hate Star Wars. It turned out to be Canon Interstellar's private carrier. Oh, excellent. Yeah, these these guys these guys are so so famous and, and appreciated by the game devs. They've been given their own space platform. Like bomb all over. I've it. got well, I've got um, there's some footage of that, and it's essentially a giant like generation ship capital ship type thing. It's about the size of a of a conventional star base, yeah. but it can move. Ooh. Yeah, there's all sorts of docking ports all along the outside, and when you dock, you get this uh, pop-up message on the HUD saying the Gnosis will depart for the system such and such in 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 one hour, yeah, <laughs> one day, four hours, whatever. Um, I think I was there overnight, so I've no idea where I am now. Oh, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Basically, every so often, I don't know if they get to choose where it goes. Some player representative. The, the, apparently, the, all the all the all the flight traffic control voices are players of this group, <laughs> uh, and and it moves. It moves around the galaxy. And they basically it, it has some kind of enormous jump drive, and every every couple of days it goes somewhere else. I where you are. Yeah. So I parked up. We're parked up on there. Well, basically, we used that as our jumping off point before we went and looked at the uh, the, uh, the the uh, barnacles of doom. Um, so I ended up turning up back there again for rebuy it doesn't have much in the way of outfitting and stuff. it's got a few bits few bits of out outfitting i don't think it's got a mission board uh, because you know who would set them yeah. it's not really, i don't think there's capacity for player set missions in there yet but every mission is find your way back from where you okay. now are <laughs> yeah but you get a lot of warning you know i mean it, it tells you in the news and on yeah you know, when the docking screen and the little message of the day when you're in the station about where it's going next yeah. i think it had a flight plan logging the next couple that it was going okay. to and i just love that idea because i just don't know what to do most of the time we go in there and we log in there on a tuesday and we'll We'll yeah. generally go and do the community goal or whatever, but the, I just love the idea of locking in and just not knowing where the hell you're going to end up next. But or, almost certainly it'll be somewhere of interest to the uh, the people who are doing all the game research. <laughs> so, so as a sort of little remora fish, I'm, I've decided to just hang on to this <laughs> this space station, see where you it ends up. You do realise that inevitably yeah. this ends up with one day you ending up on a front line of a war. <laughs> I imagine it's going to be a priority target by the Thargoid High Command. Yeah, I'm doing my part. It's going to be great, it's just like Starship Troopers. Um, but yeah, very highly eventful evening. We've got saw Thargoids by the bucket load. You know, you wait three, you wait thirty years, and then like fifteen come along at once. It was insane. I wonder if it's got a longer jump range than your ship. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Well, my ship is is totally pimped for distance. I can do like... Yeah, I wonder if it's got a longer jump range. I can still... So I could go somewhere where no one can get back from. Oh, well, uh, I guess I'll just have to stick around. I mean, I can always just blow myself up and... Um... Yeah, good point. Take a, a, a sidewinder at Trevithic Dock. That that I I I don't see the rebuy screen often because I'm generally far too paranoid and careful. But the, I love the 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 sort of booby trap it, it <laughs> contains. There is there's two options on that screen. One is forfeit everything and start again yeah. in a sidewinder with a thousand credits, and the other is pay pay for the replacement ship. Okay, I gotta pay for the replacement ship, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, nearly, the order. nearly clear. <laughs> it's random order each time. Or have like a, a sort of casino roulette wheel thing, and you yeah. have to hit the button on the right. Yeah. Um, QT up. <laughs> quick time event. <laughs> Press X to not lose your current ship and all its stuff. <laughs> Um, yeah, so exciting times. It's interesting. I mean, I seem to have somehow found myself right in the middle of the action as yeah. well, which is quite uncharacteristic. So, yeah, we're definitely carrying on there. Um, yeah, who knows what, what next? Um, probably some kind of further development in Thargo. I mean, there's some kind of convention going on at the moment. I've seen Somlin, yes, Somlin posting bits and pieces. So, did you see that mock up of the uh, Cobra Mark yeah. III? And it looked to be half size as well. Yeah. It's huge. Um, but, yeah, so apparently they're going to be dropping some kind of big content reveal at this thing. So, probably yeah, even for... by the time we broadcast this, by the time you know this what it's goes going on. To be? Yeah. Fargoids. No, no, no. They're already here. Everyone more knows about Fargoids. that. It was something even more crazy, I imagine. Borlons. <laughs> the four lots have arrived. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting time to be playing um Elite Dangerous right now. If you've ever if you've ever bought it ever, you know, since it's launched and played it a bit and got really played in. it a bit, got bored, went away. Come back and have a look now because there's that you're playing it and I'm stuff not. going on. Yeah, you're a lifetimer with all, you've yeah. got stations named after you and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, yeah. you should probably pay more interest in it than I do, with Captain Casual here. Um, yeah, Path of Exile, obviously, we're getting to the brand new content there, and all the other games I'm playing, there's all sorts of new stuff going wow. on. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, why don't you talk for a little bit? I'm going to talk a bit. Okay, I'm going to talk a bit about difficulty. In games. Difficulty? Oh, not two, my favourite thing. <clears throat> two things have happened in the last week. Mm -hmm. uh, one game release and one 
realization about how difficulty works in Forza. Than okay. Anyone. It's opened up a lot of conversations. Mm. The Forza one is interesting. All right. Before, when you chose what you would do on your difficulty, will I have uh, ABS on? Okay. Or will I have stability control? So sort of challenge mode yeah. multipliers. It, the yeah. more you turned off, the higher your reward would be. Yep. That That's seemed... not there anymore by default. Oh. You still get extra credits. They got rid of all that. AI up. They haven't got rid of it. They put them in lock boxes. They're the mod cards you get in lock boxes. So you get a card out that says, uh, "I will give you thirty percent more credits for this race if you turn ABS off." Oh. Uh, you or, can't just do that now. You can do it, but you don't get the money. Oh, okay. Or you know, drive it just from inside the, uh, not the over the top view, but inside the cockpit view. Okay. Um, or whatever. Interesting. And, and so, again, the, the uh, marketplace still hasn't launched. There's been a little bit of a, oh dear, have we upset the entire fan base again? <laughs> um, <laughs> producers' letter. Uh, Turns out, out when we make them pay for everything, they get cross. Hmm. Well, it's more when we take away stuff that used to be a feature, and now you have to. That's the sin, isn't it? Add yeah. new stuff and charge for it by all means, but don't take away stuff yeah. people already had for free it, and make them pay for the, to cos- get it back. It added cosmetics for the uh, your driver, yeah. So you get a stupid overall, yeah. So you could look like a complete shit. <laughs> uh, don't bother because. Yeah, who cares? No yeah. one sees it. Worth no one can see it, yeah. yourself, um, yeah. But, you know, they've added that, that's fine. But, uh, the, the, yeah, they, they've made it so that the difficulty levels don't pay as much money. Uh, which, is, yeah. Does that seem like reasonable tuning? No, because it's still there. You just have to yeah. pay. In, is it, have, it, have people been getting far too much in-game credits? Is, is some sort of sink they've, they've had to do? Well, that, Try and bleed away the uh, too much problem. money. Uh, Forza, especially if you go to ForzaMotorsport.net and sign up for the rewards, mm. which give you a weekly stipend based oh. on how much work you've done. There's nothing like a weekly stipend to totally screw your in-game economy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I get it. just sort of blows it out of all I prediction. Over a quarter yeah. of a million a week or something. <laughs> yeah. 275 or something, I think. Stipends are, stipends are a great idea in principle, and it, it, as long as you can be sure for how long they're going to continue. If, they, went, if they're just open ended, they are going to destroy I went your back economy. To Horizon 3, which was last uh, year's game. Yeah. I think I've got 13 million credits. <laughs> <at> that. <laughs> That'll buy you a loaf of bread, will it? Yeah. Oh, Wheelbarrows of currency. Any car in the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they don't, because they can't put the prices up to to match yeah. that kind of. Because hoarding. you've also got because you've got the guy who's got in. Who yeah, doesn't have any of this. New player doesn't have the VIP, which again yeah, has been yeah. nerfed. Uh, before VIP, you pay. You've got the big uh, box, the expensive box version. Yeah, which had you know all the car extra car packs and the VIP membership, which gave you I think twenty percent on your rewards again and now that was a couple of cards uh, yeah yeah so sort of hyperinflation which it seems to be a natural state for almost every game economy yeah. but does it really matter how no. much money people have it, let people don't make people have to run if it only matters if it is in any way linked to real money earnings yeah. of that well, company if you can buy these lock boxes for in-game money as well as real money cash then yeah, the suddenly moment, it's a problem at yeah. the moment you can't buy them for real world cash but mm. that may well happen the moment they turn on the marketplace yeah which is still suspiciously not turned because if you're hyperinflating and yet still but charging when the it same comes down to yeah the difficulty in a racing game yeah where you have to buy it, it does all get away a bit from the basic yeah. purpose of the game, doesn't it? Yeah. Does this sound reasonable? The right. difficulty in a racing game yeah. should be yeah. you should always have enough money for the car for the next race. Um, Otherwise, you're repeating races. Uh, well, I, mean, you, I can't remember, I come from a tight, somewhat different gaming background where that kind of insane grinding is par for the course. So I would just... Same <laughs> listeners who don't play <laughs> anymore. <laughs> in a normal single player game yeah. I would expect that you would be able to do the next thing when you get to the next exactly. thing I would not I, so, something's gone wrong in a single player game if you have to go away and do the thing you just did ten more times yeah. before you can move forward and guess what this game appears to be balanced for that it's so an MMO that you yeah. can just go on and just play it all the way through Yeah. Uh, the only time where I found money was a bit hard yeah. was I decided to buy myself a McLaren F1 so I could do uh, one of the races because I fancy the McLaren F1. Well, that's 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 on you then, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's not necessary to continue. You just wanted a flash yeah. car, which um, is fine. Charge I wanted what you to like, finish right? off all the races in one area, yeah. the first group, and I needed a good car to do it, and the McLaren was that car. Uh, but I could have kept going on, going up the um, ladder quite happily. 
So are they expecting that you're going to go through the entire game on the basic gear, get to the top, have a ton of money and nothing to do, and then that's why they're going to charge you a ton of money to, to add the difficulty levels to make to give you more challenge? Oh, yeah, no, because though, no, it's not adding the difficulty levels, though. It's adding the ability to... To earn money. Earn money from oh, having the higher Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can turn these difficulty factors on yeah. and off as much so as you like. So what you're basically you... doing is you're paying in-game currency... To, for the option to earn more in-game currency? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I think what we've here, confirmed here is that all 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 computer game economies are a joke. It definitely is. Yeah, a joke. <laughs> even including ones that hire so-called economists. I'm not sure yeah. Eve Online <laughs> could, would stand a, a real a real sort <laughs> a real in-depth audit from the well, International Monetary Fund. Uh, I think you'll find that uh, what actually happens World with Bank. these economies is you look at the economy and they hold together how, for now. It would be how a country is if it was a massive Ponzi scheme. <laughs> If there weren't any laws <laughs> yeah. or oversight, yeah. Uh -huh. Fair and, enough. and if inflation was seriously out of whack, yeah, but in and real no life, one's going to turn around and say, "Can you back this up?" Yeah, but in real life economies, people people start starving to death if it goes seriously wrong. Which yeah. at which point you then have a, a quite a violent readjustment of how it's all working. Which, in computer games, it doesn't actually matter at the end of the day if it goes wildly out of kilter because because no one's no one's going to starve to death. Prices. Well, it either everyone can afford everything or no one can afford anything. And either either it, either it way, you're going to get to the point where you have to take the wheelbarrow of cash yeah. to get your bread. Yeah, exactly. You're still going to go pick up that. So portion. I mean, it's amusing, but uh, at the end of the day, somewhat. <sighs> I don't know. It doesn't yeah. doesn't matter so much, but but I can see how it could be a bit of a, a slap in the face to people to have have things taken away, which yeah. is the objection there, I suppose. Yeah. Now the other part of the difficulty thing. Yeah. You are aware of Cuphead. Cuphead. I've I've. This is that. I remember seeing some stuff at some expo, some show yeah. years and years ago about it coming soon, and it was it was a really distinctive visual style. It basically looked. Like yeah, it looks yeah. like a sort of a, a live act, not live act. Well. A game, a game that looked like the very early nineteen thirties Mickey Mouse movies that you can play. Yes, sort of dynamic, and it, and it still looks exactly like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The One of the fascinating style. On a black and white CRT for a while, and that looked brilliant. <laughs> it's flickering and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, this, so this visually is distinctive platformer. I now believe. I'm going to be very clear here and say, yeah. this is a game which I think looks gorgeous. Yeah, and will never play. Okay. Because I don't like platformers and I don't like bastard hard. Oh yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go near the dam. I think it looks interesting, but not my cup of tea. No. Now, there's been a discussion about this on difficulty because yeah. it is really, really hard. Okay. There are two schools of thought on the difficulty. Mm. One is too easy. One is too hard. Uh, one is it is hard. <laughs> yeah. You should get good and get be good. Able, get mm. be able to get play good. it. It's mm. designed for people who want to play a hard game. If you don't want to play a hard game, mm. don't play it. That seems reasonable, actually. The I second, don't have an objection there. On the second uh, point of view is yeah. the developers should add an easy mode because the hard modes are all still going to be there, but it means more people will get to play it. Um, yeah, I no, I, I'm not sure I hold with that. I mean, it seems like that seems like the most egalitarian and diplomatic sort. You know, the most democratic way. Developers should attempt to cater to everyone's taste with 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 increased flexibility and options. But at the end of the day, a developer is making a game. Developer wants to make. Yes. If the design intent is it to is, make a very an, hard game, it is an artistic statement, and it definitely is an artistic statement. It's entirely their prerogative to do that. It's entirely my prerogative to decide. Screw that! I can't be asked yeah. and not buy it. And then well. they'll 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 they'll, <laughs> they'll live or die by by how popular. <laughs> You know, their game is, I suppose, but it's, it's artistic integrity versus you know audience reach, yeah. isn't it? Profitability. And, and some very prominent game designers have said that uh, all games should be accessible to everybody. Are you, and I'm not sure I agree with that either. Yeah. I, I think I think that that is going a bit far. I, I mean, think I think games should be accessible to the people you're in, you're targeting, the people yeah. you're intending it to reach. It, it, again, it was a discussion which came up with Dark Souls. It doesn't help. Board, also, say, that, should that have an easy mode? Well, also, difficulty is not a set a, th a set of three different options you pick at the start of a game. A difficulty is a, you know, gaming skill is a very wide spectrum that, yeah. that you know has all sorts of different keys along. Yeah. No, I'm getting confused with my metaphor. And, and difficulty is you can't um, just say easy, medium, hard and, and assume that covers everyone. Difficulty is a nebulous thing because there's harsh but fair difficulty, and yeah. there's completely randomly harsh difficulty. Or even literally impossible. Yeah. You know, some games, yeah. either through design or through bugs in, in history, have been uncompletable, I mean, unwinnable. Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a game which is very, very harsh. Mm -hmm. It will kill you the moment you make a mistake, it will kill you. Mm. But it would be very clear that if you make a mistake, you will die. It gives you the opportunity yeah. to learn and improve, yeah. and that seems and reasonable. you do yeah. learn and you do improve, and it is really satisfying when you do. Yeah. And again, I think it would be rather disappointing if it, you just blast through it on each mode. But take... 
um, the new Assassin's Creed, mm. which has a no combat mode. Which enables you it's to just, go through and just look at the world. Just the story, just the story and the code, the story, but it, all the codex entries. Yeah, they've got some sort, around, some sort of weird pretense of learning Egypt. Egyptian culture and history and just stuff. Just enjoy the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, well, Seems a reasonable thing. Oh uh, yeah, and the other argument was Mass Effect. Should Mass Effect have a way where you can just play through it really easily and it just becomes a story? I can go whole 10, 20 minutes in Skyrim without being attacked by anything and quite enjoy the walk in the countryside. Yeah. And I sometimes find myself being, oh no, a dragon. I've got to get do the combat thing again. If I'm Skyrim not here for that. had a passive mode where there was just no nothing aggroed aggro yeah that wouldn't actually hurt the game that much <laughs> well it sort of does if you train up the illusion school of magic high enough you've got the you've got a calm spell which you basically cast on things and it just it scrubs you off their aggro table and resets them to non-hostile <laughs> you just go around zapping stuff like that and it's essentially pacifist mode yeah but um yeah i mean it's i it, 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 People are free to make the games. Here's an interesting moral question. Then, assuming you bought Cuphead, you've played yep. it, you've played it for an hour and thought, "Oh God, this is insane. This isn't what I signed up for." You either in, either deliberately or accidentally have been tricked into buying a game that's far too hard for you, and you're not enjoying it. Are yep. you are you justified in invoking your Steam refund then within your two hours and just dumping it? Not because it's are. not because it's broken, not because it doesn't work, or be, yeah, but, but because, because you don't like it. Because it, essentially, you don't like it. Yeah, it's no, too I difficult. think you're incredibly justified in doing that. Yeah, and that is a risk of having a game which isn't for everyone mm, mm. but a lot of people will think it's for everyone find it isn't get cross and use how, the only recourse they have look at it and think oh that's a gorgeous cartoon it's going to be fun it's going to be easy and then not not heard any of the well you just stuff. go and watch someone who can play it on on a let's yeah. play or youtube or whatever I mean, yeah you, twitch i logged into my xbox uh sitting there on the side was a big picture of a cup there i could click that and could buy the game i could play it Mm. Do you have a two-hour refund thing on the Xbox? Uh, no. Uh, just Steam. So. But then, you know, the use of Steam refunds, I think, is quite a contentious thing as well. Our developers are suddenly finding money taken away from them again because of it. Yeah. Do they hold the proceeds for two hours before giving it to the devs? That seems a logical way, but then I can't imagine they, uh, they have the escrow capabilities. I, know. I know that Odd. Uh, Mike Biffle said that his last game, which was very short, yeah. a very, very short narrative game, had a remarkably low uh, refund rate. Hmm. It, 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 People were gripped enough for the first two hours to no, let that expire. No, no just I mean, not. You could complete it in the two hours. Oh, right. And oh, so you could actually complete it and give yeah. it back and get your money back, but no, hardly anyone was doing it. Yeah, it was, it was a really, really tiny percentage. Yeah, yeah. Percentage it's about expectation management, isn't it? I mean, I don't know if it's the people who make Cuphead's duty to point out no this really is a difficult game because a lot of people will take that as a challenge so, oh yeah. yeah difficult is it right well here i go oh bloody hell it is yeah well other people have said that uh yeah it's difficult but not a nice difficult mm. it's not quite a fair difficult oh well it is, yeah yeah Which yeah because it's, it's not really a binary thing is it yeah. there's different ways it can there's be one journalist who completed it and uh uh decided no it was, wasn't the thing that she liked um Got to the end of the game, fine, yeah. but yeah, it just wasn't fun. And well, that's, a, that's, my over it <laughs> that's a difficult, yeah. Yeah, whatever. But um, yeah, that's a different thing, isn't it? It, it? it wasn't too difficult. She obviously completed it and then decided, yeah, she hadn't enjoyed it, yeah. which is a whole other <laughs> aspect. And the aspect. kind of rule of the internet is no one gets to tell anyone else that they're not having fun. Oh, exactly. But um, oh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I sort of seen you know, seen some of this all going on tangentially on you know, news sites and whatever and just thinking, I can't be bothered. So, so already just that reputation yeah. has put it off for me. I mean, I... Yeah, quite intrigued I suppose by the art style but not enough to want to buy it or even I, bother I watching just, a Let's Play I suspect really. that at some point it's going to come up on the Humble Monthly Bundle or on yeah there'll be a cheap version Xbox somewhere games with gold or something and then I will play it yeah. for five minutes and think yeah I was right for not buying this yeah <laughs> fair enough good like I say expectation yeah. management yeah. Uh, cool so what are you up to? Um, yeah, well, I'm going to talk about Warframe, which isn't okay. actually a static group, but I'm still playing that on and off throughout most weeks. I got another Warframe. I've actually, Huzzah! Yes, not actually that bad. Not 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 too bad. To, right, so every planet in the solar system has a boss on yeah. one of the locations. So it was an assassination mission. It's a boss fight. Some of them are, are pretty... Are they in the Warframe? Uh, are they in the Warframe? No, well, no. Some of them are just giant monsters or who's robots. Um, and so those, yeah, boss fights you can, you know, say a lot about. Some of them are pretty straightforward. Go in, shoot yeah. lots, you win. Hooray. I mean, the, I think the first one of the first bosses you come across is uh, this, this robot thing. You, and you just have to, you have, it's basically invulnerable, but it has four legs, giant stompy robot thing. You shoot its legs and then it collapses and then you shoot its body and you do that three times and you're done. It's so not, not difficult. Yeah, it was another chap who, who's, whose power is he just teleports a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> which, you know, makes it a bit trickier shooting him, but you can do it. Some of the bosses' fights are enormously difficult, and I've ranted about them before, but each of them then drops a component blueprint of a warframe so okay. and it's always the same warframe from the same boss so you know where to go to farm so the boss on the first planet on, uh, he, the boss on, he's on venus and he drops uh, isn't, there isn't one on earth oh there is one on earth come back to that later anyway um he drops a piece of the rhino warframe and the rhino warframe is this huge hugely diff- sort of survivable tank one whose special whose passive special abilities he does ground shock waves when he lands i didn't think it was going to be the fast nimble weaver <laughs> he does what it says on the tin certainly yeah uh, fam- yeah all, all the memetics uh, stuff i've seen on all the on the warframe reddit and forums is, is the rhino always types in capitals it's that kind of thing yeah. rhino strong anyway um yeah so if you wanted that warframe you go to that boss and you find that fight and every time you kill the boss you're guaranteed to get one of the blueprints but there are three sorts okay yeah so are you guaranteed to get a unique blueprint no no you'll get the same one sometimes and you can trade those with people they're they're not they're tradable but um but the trade the trade no no it's Uh, it's that awful your character has to stand there afk as a shop type mechanism i can't stand that but apparently there's there there is a very good uh, website called warframe.market uh which actually does a lot of arbitrary i don't approve it it, it helps people get in contact with each other uh new urls.market I, yeah, I don't I know. I had to go to a dot .school site the other oh, day wow. for a martial arts thing. And it was oh, terrible. gosh, yes. Crazy. Cats and dogs lying down together. Yeah. It's So, yeah, anyway, so so first time you get one in three chance of... you get And, and you don't have any, so you get one that you don't have. Fine. Second time is one in th- is, is two in three chance of getting the one you don't have. Anyway, but effectively, after nine visits, you're basically almost guaranteed to have all three parts. So that's not bad. Nine, I can yeah. do that. And the, the actual mission's quite fun, and there's often reasons to be there anyway. You're levelling up other guns and stuff, so you want to go back to a lower level area, do it on a boss that way yeah. you can farm the warframe component as well okay, yeah. the materials you get you're finding as clumps of resource throughout all the missions anyway that i haven't had to farm for those i've had way more than i needed to make the warframe cool. i had so that was okay the actual so once you've got all three of those you make these three parts a systems a chassis and a new optics and once you've got all three of those you then go to the in-game shop market terminal thing which is the cash shop but also sells stuff for in-game currency and you can buy the blueprint which assembles those three pieces together and boom there you go new warframe new class so the one i got is called frost it has all sorts of ice powers as its abilities i think its passive ability is that if if you're hit in melee you have a chance of freezing the thing that hits you nice which is good yeah um i think its number one ability is a sort of beat is, is a, just a, a straight blast them with an ice blast type thing it does a sort of a line of jagged ice spikes out from oh. Okay. That's number two. Number three is a snow globe ability, which does this giant. You just shake it, and there's little village in there. <laughs> it does. It, it creates this big orb around you with, with a swirling blizzard, and I think anything that comes into there gets gets wailed on price. It stays put see. though. You run off, and it'll just stay there, whirling away. I don't yeah. think it times out either. It's quite interesting. These all cost energy, which you're collecting as you go. I don't even know what the fourth one does. It's called Avalanche, and I only just unlocked it. I didn't get a chance to push the button. I suspect. <laughs> yes. It might do something with snow. I don't I know but it's interesting in that it does genuinely change because i thought it'll be just little cosmetic twinkles and you know fundamentally the game is the same but it does seem to change up how you play quite a bit i've gotten really used to the excalibur warframes abilities that sort of dash in with the sword so basically the warframes are classes they are classes yes each each warframe has one passive ability and four active abilities powered by energy that you find throughout the one to four yeah. keys i mean and the thing with excalibur is its passive ability is bonus damage with swords okay which obviously means that when you're playing excalibur you're always going to have a sword for melee yeah. now I, that means that now i've got a frost warframe i can try I'm, and i'm leveling that up i can try stuff that isn't swords like daggers wow. or hammers or staffs there's whips i think there's all sorts of different sorts of oh, melee options assault. there's double daggers there's all sorts of things and yeah you can still use the swords if you like but now i can try all sorts of other things as well so it does it, is, it does change the game up in interesting ways each of these warframes are quite considerably different i talk about the octavia warframe i've not the, the, it takes quite a rigmarole to get hold of it from some of the high-end planets but it's a bard okay it comes with a bunch of musical themed abilities where well, is this sort of techno bard thing it's called magic carpet ride all it, well it can do this is the uh-huh. clever thing it's you remember lord of the rings online with its abc files uh, yes so the the octavia warframe once you've got it you you when you're fiddling around in the equipping screen you can pull up this extra interface which is a a 64 step sequencer Ooh. yeah with, with about eight different tracks you've got the b- different drum track melody bass and stuff and you have to actually add pips notes in there you can <laughs> literally compose using 
using a, a old style mod sequencer yeah. thing, you, the music you want to play in the mission. And if you go to YouTube and look for Octavia it's songs, right look for look for look for the word mandacord, which is the sort of in-game name for this musical weapon thing. It's like a big sort of swirling set of notes on the forearm yeah. that go around in a sort of neon thing as you're running through. It's all very techno, all very Daft Punk. The whole game is essentially Daft Punk the musical. But um, you get this, yeah. You can basically make your own music, and that's not. Because you could do that in a few other games. I think, um, yeah, famously, Lord of the Rings Online does it. Oh, but this, it but this keys into gameplay in a way that I've not seen anywhere else in any other game. You once you start your music playing, it uses it basically. It's locked to 120 beats per minute, and the beats work in game with so basically your whole team starts on the point the, the, the octavia will start playing the music and if you do things in time with the music you generate a buff oh and it depends what you're doing you can if you crouch 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 you build up a stealth buff if you jump 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 you build up a speed buff i think if you shoot in time to the music you gain gun damage buff and that's really not going to be terribly practical at all nice, like but it's a really clever uh, so like patsman there was another one yeah uh, Pats upon, sort of. it's really there clever was a dungeon idea. one as well yeah Dance of the Necromancer. Yes, yes. Crypto, yeah, that's Necro the, Dancer. Yeah, that's, yeah that's the one. It's a sort of music time game. Yeah, so basically you've only built up a kind of musical game time thing. Of course, it doesn't work very well and it's not terribly popular because everyone starts to try and put in through the fire and flames like Dragon Force and yeah. because no one can play the game to that kind of speed. Also, the problem is that the, the sequencer is locked to a pentatonic scale and D minor, which basically... Uh, it, I think they've done this. So what, what, Well, the reason they've done this is what happens if you've got four Octavias in your group and they're all playing different music? Yeah, I'll give, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have to sort of co try and coordinate it so that it all doesn't discord constantly. Yeah. But that does mean that pretty much every popular beat combo song I've ever seen done on a YouTube has every, has every fifth or eighth note or something just goes and is completely wrong because you haven't actually got the note you're yeah. after. So it's it's a sort of cle really clever idea that doesn't really work too well in in a third person it's shooter. Own music, people. <laughs> well, it comes with some songs already, I think, which are designed to work well with it. So, but I can't wait to get hold of that one. I mean, there's some interesting things with the different war frames in there there's one called chroma which i don't have and basically based on which cosmetic energy color you choose because yeah. you can you can color the different parts of your warframe primary color secondary okay. color detailing the energy which is the glowy bits the color you choose there determines what damage type you do Oh, nice. What elemental damage type, radiation, fire, whatever, based on the colour your suit is. So how it's, does that work in reality? I don't know. I mean, yeah, well, you, you tailor it to the kinds <laughs> of enemies you're after, but you go into the, your character create, you know, your character editor, and you choose a different colour, and off you go. You've got suddenly got different coloured weapons. There's one called Equinox, which flips between a night mode and day mode, different different roles. It's like they've take they've done the basics with normal classes, and then decided to really just see what else, have a bit of fun with it, yeah. and see how far they can go. It, yeah, some of them seem really interesting. Of course, the problem is I've only got two warframe slots and it's 12 platinum for another one there you go yeah i'm gonna to have to start paying the money if i want another one How after frost i could delete money? i could delete an existing warframe but those are quite hard to come by yeah. and, and a lot of work's gone into them so uh, i don't know i think it's about uh, i think it's about 50 platinum for five quid or something like that i don't know something like that so next to nothing it's yeah it's, it's, it's not huge or, or but i could see myself racking that up quite a lot yeah. if you build get loads of them well, you have you have to buy extra gun slots as well but the guns are less less um less collectible you can I'm, I'm quite happy to delete guns i've finished leveling and get, get new ones instead but but i don't want to be throwing warframes away no. and so i'm going to need to start buying the slots which is where they make the majority yeah. of their so money to be honest and that seems fair i probably will probably stump them some cash but uh, i'm enjoying the variation i've got a grenade launcher weapon as well Ooh. and this thing it's basically fires five grenades and then middle mouse button to detonate them so, oh, all, so you can lob them around corners and then <laughs> uh, and i'm just having all sorts of fun with lob shots on that i didn't think it'd be i thought it'd be a gimmick weapon but it's hugely powerful if you can make the blast hit yeah and so it becomes a really skillful weapon to bounce them around corners and lob them over the top. And they've got a thing that shows enemies on the mini map as well. So just having a lot of fun there. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I think Friday's uh, is a tabletop simulator, but now I'm doing Pathfinder again. I've re resurrected the old Kingmaker Pathfinder campaign. So yeah. we started our... Uh, well, yes, yes. I've decided to make the uh, kingdom ruling thing as a background thing because it was just bogging down and turning into Excel spreadsheets online. So, um, yeah. And we had a first trying to remember how combat works session this week and it went quite well. So looking forward to that going forward. Which one of them died? Uh, nobody died. Oh. Well, there's a really large party as well, a seven-player party. The module's only designed for Four, so I'm having to do the, uh, old, having to beef the encounters up on the fly, and it turns out it needs more beef. Add more, uh, three kobolds per bell. Add three more kobolds. Gotcha. You're an expert DM. I yeah. take your advice highly. And that's pretty much my week, really, at the moment. So busy, busy. What about you? Have you got anything else? Uh, have I got anything else? <laughs> not really, because um, I've mainly been uh, not doing anything at all useful. Oh, fair enough. I did a bit of coding in Unity, but that doesn't really. 
Uh, mm. Anything good? I, no. I've, uh, I've, I've been learning the UI stuff because uh, I didn't know the UI stuff. Yeah, cool. I wanted to make something, but I haven't made the thing, but I've learned the UI stuff. It's a good first step. It is. I'm going to need a UI. Yeah. And I've been uh, getting very uh, annoyed at large downloads for games. Hmm. Fine. So, <laughs> they do that. Games are about 100 gig now, and it's mm. getting a bit annoying. Yeah. Where, where will it end, this madness? Oh, yeah. Shadow of War Mordor mm. has been an extra Mordor. That's 100 gig, by the way. <laughs> Well, so when you do buy that eventually, be aware that is going to be a large download. Yeah, but by the time I get around to it, we'll all be using Exobyte hard drives anyway. So, yeah. Exo, Peta, whatever, the, whatever the one that's like millions more Googles. I don't know, I'm running out of SI units. You are. But do your spiel. Yeah, if you, if you go along to com, you can uh, see our previous episodes, including the Random Hamlet podcast. Go along to YouTube, see our videos, give them a like, subscribe if you feel like it. And uh, you'll very soon be able to watch your horrific... Oh, how's that coming? Horrific <laughs> long. <laughs> Not oh. as long as the editing, I imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just had to walk I just walked for a week. You, you've got to actually edit the damn bit. Yeah, I think there's three hours of material that I've got to put out. <laughs> I'm going to put it out over a month, I think. Oh. Yeah, and it was nice that you did As long actually... as you can get it out by May, because that's when yeah. I'm starting the next no, one. No, I think it's going to start going out this week or next. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you remembered to say uh, an introduction at the start of each day. It I makes did everything a lot harder. A lot easier, I mean. Excellent. Um, yeah, um, you didn't go quite as mad as I was expecting. I... Up until the point you started talking to the uh, uh, um, rucksack. Yes. You did have a bit of a fight with your rucksack. That was only that was the only bit you actually recorded. You should have seen the actual the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. I did go to a bit of a fear and loathing in North Devon type place. Yeah. And there's an awful lot of discussions about not being able to find ice cream. Mm, yes, yes. There was a lot less ice cream than I was expecting. <laughs> Stefan! <laughs> What's wrong with you people? Cornwall for the ice cream. Ah, uh, look forward to Actually, the next Devon week. as well, but yeah. Yeah, uh, and um, there'll also be um, more Minecraft. That's what I was trying to think of, yes. Yes. Yes, we've still a couple more episodes on Minecraft to go. Uh, I'm thinking about a month, but still. So, I'm yeah. confident. Yeah. Got a massive build to we do, can but see I'm the cracking end. on. Yeah, the end's mainly waiting for cobble gens to uh, fill <laughs> stuff up, but apart from that... That bloody chest. No matter how much we scale it up, we still hit a limit. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And if you come back next week, we'll be talking about more games, what we've been playing. So with that, see you next time. Goodbye.